Oceans, beaches, oysters, champagne, a man in a suit on a beach, what? A fun house that's not so fun, and a golden gun. Join us as we venture into Scaramanga's Fun House in our decoding of the pre-title sequence to the 1974 James Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun. Hi, this is Dan Silvestri. Tom Pizzotto. I'm Vicky Hodges. The SpyMovieNavigator.com and our Cracking the Code of Spy Movie show. Let's go. All right. So, bam. We're into the gun barrel sequence featuring Roger Moore in his second outing as Bond, 1974. As the blood drips down the screen, we are faced with a beautiful beach landscape. We're immediately thinking, wow, where is this? Yeah, we think, all right. The Bond movies continue to take us to exotic locations. I like it. Yeah, now this is high on my list to get to. It's, it's actually Feng Ya Bay in Thailand. It's otherwise known as James Bond Island there. Yeah, we got to get there. It's a very, very busy tourist destination now. Although when I say now, I'm not sure about during the pandemic. <laughs> leading right. up to the pandemic, it was extremely packed. Yeah, right. So now, th as a side note, this is Harry Saltzman's last Bond movie as a co-producer with Albert Cubby Broccoli, as he sold his shares of Ian Productions to United Artists after this. But the reason that Ian Productions can continue to make Bond movies long after exhausting what they wanted from the Fleming novels is because of the deal that Harry Saltzman struck with Fleming, which included that if the film series became so successful that they ran out of Fleming material that they wanted to use, that Saltzman had the right to create original James Bond content and stories for future movies beyond the Fleming novels. That is why Ian Productions is still around today producing Bond movies long after Fleming and Harry. So thank you, Harry. <laughs> And what an amazing deal that was. Yeah. Okay, so now we see a man, smaller in stature, crossing the golden sand, carrying what appears to be a tray with a bottle of iced champagne on it. Yeah. Who is greeted by another man and a beautiful woman. The man has been swimming, and as he turns to the camera, we notice <laughs> something very strange about his chest. He has a third nipple. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me guess. A beautiful woman in a Bond movie? Weird. Who would have guessed? <laughs> now, she was played by Maude Adams here yeah. in the first of three roles she would have in James Bond movies. Yep. And they were for different roles. <laughs> Most of the recurring actors had roles like M or Money Penny, a Q, yeah. where they kept coming back with the same role. Other than like a Shane Rimmer type. She's yeah. kind of almost has that, except she had a lead. Yeah. Anyway, the third nipple is a real condition, and it's sometimes known as the accessory or supernumerary nipple, which affects 1% to 5% of the population. It is officially called polythelia. Yeah, I was wondering what that might be called, Tom. <laughs> you didn't know that? Come on. Uh, I was just like, okay, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> By the way, I love the bird sounds that you hear throughout this whole opening scene. It's just perfect sound effects for this paradise that's in front of us. I love it. Yes, and speaking of sounds, you know what I like about this scene? is It's the landscape, uh, the ocean. The sun, the sand, may seem warm and cozy, but the tone of the scene is far from it. It's highlighted by the foreboding soundtrack, use of minor keys. Something's going to happen, or it's not what it seems. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, really, in musical scores in the old days, <laughs> yeah, the old days, whenever that was, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago, <laughs> I don't know, major keys often represented lighter, happier scenes, while minor keys were often used for more somber, sadder scenes. But of course, it was, this wasn't always the case. There are happy tunes in minor keys and sadder ones in major keys, but lots of funeral dirges, for instance, are minor keys like Chopin's Funeral March and so on. So in 1974, we're thinking music in a minor key, something not really celebratory is gonna be happening. <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> on whose side you're on. Well, that's true too. <laughs> anyway. We see this suited figure approaching across the beach, looking completely out of place for the climate. The smaller guy beckons to him. We now can establish that the smaller guy is some kind of a, I don't know, servant, waiter type person for this guy that we will come to know as Scaramanga. Yes, especially when Scaramanga yells, knick-knack, Tabasco, apparently for his oysters. And knick-knack says, right away, Monsieur Scaramanga. Hey, I did that pretty well. <laughs> That's pretty good there, Dan. Yeah. 
The Suited Man is another actor who's now had different roles in James Bond movies. First, he's walking on this beach, and it really he had this hat on it. It really made him look (laughs) out of place for being on the beach. Definitely. Now, we never get his name in the movie, but he's credited as being the character Rodney. And this is an American character actor, Mark Lawrence, who can also be seen in the 1971 film Diamonds Are Forever uh-huh. as a Las Vegas hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got yeah, a great, wasn't he, great... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, wasn't he the guy um, who didn't know there was a pool down when he threw Plenty of Tool off the balcony? Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same guy. He throws her <laughs> off the balcony. I didn't know there was a pool down there. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great scene. Line. Yeah. All right, so let's get back to the golden gun here. Now, this guy is shown into an impressive property. This place is just gorgeous. Yeah. And it's got all these African and Asian influences. Scaramanga is obviously well-traveled and a very wealthy man. Now, Rodney is given an envelope containing wads of cash, but why? Now, it's also interesting, they were U.S. dollars. Yeah, yeah that's so true. So they're in Thailand, but the envelope was U.S. dollars. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what's going on here? Okay, so I think this pre-title sequence so far has done exactly what it's supposed to do. It makes us wonder what is happening, where it is happening, and who exactly are these unfamiliar faces that we have seen so far. Great job so far, I think. That's great, because we don't know any of these people. That's good. Yeah, and this suited man, he's advised to head into an adjourning room and wait for Scaramanga to join him. Now, this is another impressive room, some sort of home gym leisure room. Just another great set. Yeah, I mean, it's not Goldfinger's lair, but it's a pretty cool set and a pretty cool uh, lair. Anyway, Peter Merton did the production design for this stuff. So, yeah, and that whole design has a Ken Adam feel to it with the round it rooms and the light pictures. It's cool, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like how Rodney looks at the lighted cases of bugs on the wall as he enters the room where he's supposed to be joined by Scaramanga. Kind of a reflective stare, like, hmm... Will I be part of Scaramanga's collection? You know, though we don't know. Again, we don't know what's going on here, but that little case of a collection of these bugs, whatever they are in there, and you see him looking at it. I think he looks at it twice. He think, okay, he's thinking something here. I love how there's these collection of bugs in different spy movies. Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. here in this one, you've got in On Her Majesty's Secret Service when James Bond goes to M's house. And he talks about lipidoptery or whatever that word is. <laughs> yeah, was. that word. Yeah, that's easy for me to say. And then we saw it in Funeral in Berlin, where we had the picture of the bugs on the wall in Ross's office. Yeah. Ah, but Tom, it's a spy movie. There's always bugs. They're generally behind the pictures or on the bottom of the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not talking about those it's bugs, a are different you? definition of a bug. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> So in, in the same scene, I, and I, I, you got to look at this. I love how Rodney, the guy who's going to meet Scaramanga, is standing in front of a machine that says J.D. Norton and Sons Super Shot Game. It's a game machine. And just, just as he's taking out his gun from the case that he's been carrying. So I thought that was a nice touch. Mm-hmm. And he spins and aims his gun down at the targets there. So that, little things like that really make the scene it pop. That's cool. Yeah. And again, this room just looks fantastic. There's yeah. two parts to it. The top level where Rodney's standing and aiming at the targets has a bar in it. There are steps down to a gymnasium part of the room with a padded mat, pommel horse, climbing rope, exercise bench, yeah. and more mats. It's interesting, but a really clever uh, design. Okay, so Scaramanga, now wearing a track suit, proceeds into the gymnasium only to be held at gunpoint by the suited man. He goes to shoot, and then suddenly the lights in the room turn red and Scaramanga dives to the floor, showing his athletic abilities. And his quick reflexes. I mean, <laughs> not just the, the athletic abilities, but he's got really quick reflexes here. And we also see Knickknack, that servant, peering through a small window, watching what was happening. What's going on there? Yeah, actually, Scaramanga diving out of the way. I thought he was actually a little slow, and then the bullet should have hit him. <laughs> That's why I, I thought it was like the bullet, bam, boom, you hear the sound, then he's diving. It's like, okay, I, don't, I thought he was slow. Anyway, all right. I digress. Not much, though. (laughs) So Scaramanga tries to open the weapons cabinet, but it's locked. Knick-Knack's voice is heard over the intercom system, and his eyes again appear from the panel in the wall, peering in. We now know that the servant is in control of some sort of game. 
Yeah. Not exactly sure what yet. Uh-huh. In fact, we see Knickknack talking to Scaramanga and Rodney from a microphone in some sort of a control room. Mm-hmm. He then flips some switches and dials, and he's obviously in control here. And Rodney turns towards a psychedelic screen on the wall, only to see Scaramanga's face appear. Yeah, that screen kind of felt like something out of a Hitchcock movie, like Vertigo or something, the spinning lines with someone in the middle of it and stuff. It was Yeah, it's actually bizarre. very similar to the cover art the, for, for that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vertigo. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now Rodney instinctively shoots, but <laughs> then he realizes it's all a trick because he shoots and he breaks a mirror. <laughs> and he's distorted by the lights, false doorways, mm. uneven flooring. I mean, remember, this we're calling this the fun house. Yeah. He's then put through his paces by various tricks and traps involving various animatronics. Yeah. And he sneers at them, clearly annoyed at this deadly game. Yeah, Disney mm. would be proud. What? <laughs> Disney would be proud. <laughs> yeah. uh, me, I'm wondering two things so far here. Clearly, the pistol that Rodney has has a silencer on it, right? I mean, it appears to be a Browning high power, but we hear a loud shot ring each time he fires. And I'm wondering also, how many shots has this guy fired already? I'm thinking it's like five shots already <laughs> that he's fired and loudly. <laughs> so that was what I'm wondering so far. What's the deal with that? Wait a minute, Dan. <laughs> what we call a silencer, though, is really called a suppressor. Okay. And they use it in movies, and the way they do is what we call movie magic. Because they don't do in real life what they show you in movies. Okay. In movies, they have a silencer on a gun. You can barely hear the thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they really do make the bang less loud, but it's not even close to how quiet the movies show these things. Okay, all right. So this felt believable to me, and it's still a very fun scene. All right, so maybe this is pretty authentic then that we hear the sound. That's good. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I All think right. that's great. That's good. That's fine. Because <laughs> yeah, a lot of times, might... Bond will be firing a weapon and you can't hear it. It's like, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Dan mentioned Disney earlier. This reminds me of the Disney uh, great movie ride, which unfortunately is defunct at Hollywood Studios, Florida now. Yeah. Through its Western and gangster animatronics and sound effects. Yeah, we loved that ride. It was oh, so I, well I, done. I, that, that ride was great. Plus, it was a nice respite while you were <laughs> yes. in the park because it, it took was a good. while. Yeah, it was, it was good. The Casablanca yeah, he, he, scene in that was terrific also. Yeah. And the gangster scenes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. he yeah, debuted in 1989, but the similarities transport me back to when uh, back there all the time and, and when I watch this scene. You can get more on this if you visit my YouTube channel, The Bond Room Unlocked, and search for episode 12. There you go. It's interesting that the animatronics were actually played by real actors and <laughs> stunt doubles, Les Crawford and Ray Marioni. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, now Les Crawford <laughs> has a pretty long history with the Bond movies, right? So he's got the golden gun here. He was in Live and Let Die, From Russia with Love, and Diamonds Are Forever, all doing pretty much uncredited stunts. This is the first one where he actually has a role. It's still uncredited, but he has an acting role as himself, mm. not as a stunt person. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. So it was probably a lot cheaper to use a real actor <laughs> than trying to build the animatronics. <laughs> yeah. So although in Disney's Great Movie Ride, they did combine animatronics yeah. with actors as well. Yeah, and I think they did some of that here as well. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I like the way they did it here. And yeah. it, it looked, I mean, you could tell they were real people. And you think either these are terrific animatronics or they, they look like real people. Or they were real people, yeah. yeah. Now, well, when the, we, scene all, the scene also uses mirrors really well. I love this. Yeah. Right? So you think about the mirror odd job uses in Goldfinger to trick Bond at Goldfinger's factory mm. to crash because he thinks he's coming at, he, he's really seeing his car move at himself, but he thinks he's moving at a different car. Mirrors can be tricky. And they definitely are used trickily here, if you'll let me use the word <laughs> trickily. 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 Okay. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> All right. Well, we, hey, I was not an English major. <laughs> <laughs> when we see the, the gangster appear here, the gangsters appear here, one looks like Al Capone firing a machine gun. Rodney shoots his six shot here. Is he reloading? I don't know. We don't see that. Or how many shots does this gun hold? I'm still wondering, like we all are here about this thing. But anyway, he shoots Al Capone. He kind of apologizes. Hey, yeah, don't hold this against me. He says, like, okay. (laughs) I thought that was cute. (laughs) Yeah, a gangster irritating Al Capone, that's not a good move. Yeah, especially to us guys in Chicago. You know, Al Capone hung out here. (laughs) 
Uh, I like how he makes one shot and both arms fall off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. One, well, yeah, it's like man, that's a poorly built animatronic. Disney would not be happy shot. about that. That's right. Disney <laughs> would be. <laughs> now, the smaller man, as we know, of Knickknack, he's watching the action unfold on computer monitors whilst flicking switches that change lighting effects and open doors. And he teases Scar- Scaramanga over the intercom, asking. I'm not going to do a good impression like, uh, like Dan, unfortunately. <laughs> I wonder where you can find your gun, Monsieur Scaramanga, your little golden gun. <laughs> golden gun? Now, we know this must be important as it's the title of the movie, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, right. This is the first reference we hear mm-hmm. of the golden gun. And we, we ourselves are wondering, you know, what is this? Why is this special? And is Scaramanga going to find this gun? But... Throughout all of this, Scaramanga looks pretty damn calm and cool, while mm. Rodney is sweating enough to fill a pool. <laughs> yeah, now, Scar- Scaramanga is only in a track suit, and Rodney has that suit tie in half. Uh, so yeah. besides his nerves, he's wearing a lot hotter outfit. Yeah, I so think he's... He is going to be warmer than Scaramanga. Yeah, I think he's sweating for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rodney enters a very eye-catching room, a disorienting room, very retro to the viewer it almost looks like a, a tangle of spider webs with the way the walls are designed jutting out at irregular angles and stuff it looks weird i mean it is disorienting for sure and it's a great design and very much is inspired by the german expressionism movie which was a silent movie the cabinet of dr caligari we had to see that movie in high school that is still a scary movie so this was uh, i think a nice little tie-in there okay so, in the center of this room is a golden gun. Yeah. And is seen in what looks like the mouth of a crow holding the barrel in its mouth with this kind of sparkly golden egg around it. And I never noticed the bird before. I've seen this scene a million times, and I just see the gun there. Now I'm looking and I'm like, hey, it's a bird. It's, uh, oh. A blackbird, very ominous. Yeah. And the gold from the gun glints off it, setting the gun apart. Yeah. It's, it's a great look, and it's, again, very Hitchcock. It's a great yeah. and the, yeah, and a the great notion, shot. And the notion of a gun like this predates that of the 1965 Fleming novel and the movie. In the 1959 novel and the movie of the same name from 1964, Goldfinger brandishes a golden pistol yeah. when disguised as a military figure. Yeah, he always had something So gold. I was surprised that one wasn't called The Man with the Golden Gun. Yeah. That's true. Of course, he's Goldfinger. He always had something gold going on there. Well, all right. So anyway, Scaramanga here goes to grab the gun, and he realizes it's behind glass, and he can't get it. (laughs) So this is a very sophisticated game of Hunter and Hunted, and it reminds me really of the story by Richard Connell called The Most Dangerous Game, which was also turned into a terrific movie. I think like 1932-ish. Yeah, it was 32. Okay. So there are a couple of big game hunters, and one is bored, and and the story includes this, this line. What are the attributes of an ideal quarry? And the answer was, of course, it must have courage, cunning, and above all, it must be able to reason. But no animal can reason, objected Rainsford. My dear fellow, said the general, there is one that can. Yeah, in the most dangerous game. He's hunting a human. And you can watch the entire movie on YouTube, so check it out. It's called The Most Dangerous Game. It's a terrific movie. And this game that Scaramanga is playing is very similar. Very now, similar. They also did a remake of that movie in 1994, and they called it Surviving the Game. And then in 2020, in a show called The Most Dangerous Game, without the word the in front of it, it's just uh-huh. called Most Dangerous Game. They released it on the now defunct QB streaming channel. Okay. One of the stars in it was our current Blofeld, Christoph Waltz. Oh, that's cool that Waltz was in there. Mm -hmm. But man, go look at the original. That is just one terrific, nonstop, great movie. Great stuff. (laughs) Yeah, I'll have to have a look at that one. It sounds great. I haven't seen that. Okay, so between Scaramanga and Rodney is a staircase. Scaramanga switches a switch on the staircase, enabling it to turn into a slope, and he slides down the ramp catching the suited man off guard and whilst grabbing the golden gun gambles and fires shooting the suited man in the head dead yikes yeah yikes is right but how could a henchman like rodney miss him 
<laughs> as, as Scaramanga is coming down, he's almost upright, sliding down this thing. Yeah. He's sliding down slowly because he's got his it's shoes It's a long down. staircase. <laughs> and so uh, how, do, how do these Bond henchmen miss something that's that wide open in front of them? I must admit, when I watch the scene when he's sliding down, I mean, he comes down quite quick. It's almost like he's got roller skates on. I know he hasn't, but it, yeah. how he went down, you know, at, at that speed... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and man, you got a gun aiming at him. Yeah, you got to hit that. You got to hit that. <laughs> I mean, duck, duck a little bit, Skirmang. You were just standing there. <laughs> right. Uh... One side of the room suddenly lights up, and we see an animatronic of James Bond in a firing pose. What? How does Scaramanga know? James Bond. Uh, who doesn't know James Bond? I mean, really, this this is crazy. Well, you know, there's the 007 bullet in this movie too. So yeah, you know, we're gonna talk about that in a second because we're gonna talk about that in a second. No. We see the smaller man, Nick Nack, enter, congratulating Scaramanga as he retrieves the money from Rodney's <laughs> body, yeah. lying in front of the James Bond figure. He sets these confrontations up regularly for Scaramanga's enjoyment. Yeah. A training exercise of some sort? Or is Nick Knack trying to bump Scaramanga off? The most dangerous game. <laughs> so then Scaramanga, he hands his golden gun to Nick Knack, and he takes Rodney's gun from him. Yeah. Suddenly, and he turns and fires at the Bond statue and blows off his fingers, and we see Roger Moore's face. Is that really Roger Moore, or is that just an animatronic? I mean, does Scaramanga see Bond as the ultimate test? Uh, Cue the music. Now, <laughs> wait. This is my last point. <laughs> I'm wondering what this Bond wax figure, ceramic statue, or whatever this is, why it is in there in Scaramanga's funhouse. When, they when, had to get Bond into the pre-title somehow. Well, yeah. When we see the whole movie, after all, we learned that Scaramanga wasn't really actually targeting 007. Remember, the 007 bullet was sent to MI6 by Andrea Anders, unknown to Scaramanga. So why is this, this statue of Bond there? It makes for a great close for the pre-title sequence, I admit that. And Bond does get into the pre-title sequence, which is nice. But now we're thinking, why is Bond a target here? Because it makes no sense. It absolutely well, makes minute. no maybe, sense to maybe, me. Maybe Ms. Anders was responsible for the James Bond thing. And Scaramanga doesn't know it's James Bond, but she might have wanted that in if she's the one who sent the 007 bullet. <laughs> okay. You don't know, you don't All right, that's a stretch. That there. That's a stretch. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll give the writers some leeway, I guess, on that one. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> right. here's a great piece of writing, speaking of writing. How many shots did Rodney take? Well, we were wondering that all along. Rodney took a bunch of shots, and then Scaramanga took four shots with Rodney's gun. So that was a total of 12 shots, including Scaramanga's. So what kind of gun did he have? Because I'm wondering all along, is this guy reloading? This is a lot of shots. <laughs> As we said, it looked like a Browning High Power, and a Browning High Power holds 13 rounds. Ha! <laughs> Brilliant writing right here. This is you great. I like it when stuff. they get the math right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I hate math, but this is great. <laughs> All right. We've decoded the pre title sequence in The Man with the Golden Gun. Thanks for checking us out. This has been Dan Silvestri, Tom Pizzato, and Vicky Hodges of SpyMovieNavigator.com. Please tell your friends about our show and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And please. Subscribe to our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies, right now through your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, too. It's been fun. Thank you. 